Hello, thank you for joining me today. My name is Dawn Franz. I am the nutritional health coach and I for National Brochures uh, located on North Academy Boulevard. Uh, I do a class here for the library virtually for at least at least once a month. And um, I'm really excited to be able to offer some classes in the store coming up in January. So I will talk about that in a minute. Um, you have joined me here today to talk about um, how to keto the healthy way. And I'm really excited to share that with you. Before I um, jump into that, I do just want you to keep in mind that everyone is different and there will never be like the perfect diet for everyone, right? So it's good to try to try different diets and find out what works for you. Um, and definitely do your research to make sure that you know what's involved. And I, I feel like the keto diet can be very beneficial and support your vitality. Um, but it's, there's a couple things to learn about keto. So I'm happy to share those with you today for this class called Keto 101. I do have to remind you that this class is not intended to diagnose or treat or mitigate any disease and that dietary supplements as well as foods can interact with medications. So please make sure you're aware of those and be talking with your doctor or pharmacist about any type of interactions that might be um, with medications you're on. So um, I have worked for Natural Grocers for almost 20 years now, um, and I enjoy working for a company that has some really great founding principles. Let me get to that slide for you. So our number one founding principle is nutrition education. So I do have a background in nutritional science. I have a bachelor's in nutritional science, but um, Mr. Grocers has given me a wealth of information over the years. And I really enjoy, I love nutrition, I love to learn, and I love to help others. Um, here at Natural Grocers, I'm able to offer free one-on-one -on -one coaching. Right now it's still over the phone or through Microsoft Teams. And um, I do classes virtually for the library and other um, for other community groups. Um, and I am in, interested in starting some virtual class at the store. So um, if you're a shopper with us, be, um, be looking at our website as well as in our store to see what classes we have coming up. Um, I have something called 21 Days to a Healthier You. I don't know if you can see this flyer. It's kind of small print on there. But uh, it's a three-part class coming up starting January 25th, Tuesday night at 5 p.m. And that first class is going to, we're going to talk about how to eat for health and vitality. Um, and then the second week uh, is February 1st, Tuesday at five. And that class is going to talk about how to keep your blood sugar balanced, which really is important for no, you no matter what diet you're on and help you kick sugar cravings. And then if you tune in for the third class, that's February 8th at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. And that one is going to, we're going to talk more about how to detoxify your life and uh, improve your diet so you're eating cleaner and even um, kind of clearing out some things in your lifestyle. So join me for those 21 days to healthier you class. You can look um, at our naturalgrocers.com website to find out how to sign up for those classes. Uh, Natural Grocers does really strive to provide a quality product. We are a true health food store. We only carry 100% organic produce and um, our meat, dairy and egg department are um, very, we do carry standards as well in those departments. Um, animals are um, treated with certain welfare and humanity standards. We carry organic, grass-fed, um, cage-free eggs. So, uh, and we also want to offer health foods at an affordable price. So a lot of our products, um, we do pass on our discounts to customers. And our Natural Grocers um, brand, you can find a really good quality product if you see our label on it, and the prices are definitely hard to beat. We do support our community and um, donations, as well as supporting community groups. And we really pride ourselves on having great employees and we support them in their health and wellness as well. So let's get on with the show, um, talking about keto diet, <laughs> shall we? So, First of all, let's just kind of think of um, about how you feel and maybe why you're interested in making the change to a ketogenic diet. I know that many people, it's just so regular to, to feel that struggle with brain fog or fatigue, metabolic issues, memory issues, um, 
The good news is, though, that a healthy diet may be able to help support these problems and maybe not the typical healthy diet that you're thinking of. So the current healthy eating paradigm is still kind of set um, with this um, uh, food guide pyramid in mind. Um, the notion that your body needs to regularly consume glucose uh, for energy definitely has become an ingrained myth. And we are advised to eat um, six to 11 servings of grain carbohydrates. And you see on the fats and oils, use those sparingly. Those are up here at the top. So um, the truth is most long-term low-fat diets that are high carb do actually prevent healthy mitochondrial function. Um, and that can make a greater contribution to disease than most people are really willing to consider. Um, so that's why traditional weight loss advice suggests that you all you have to do is count calories and eat less and exercise, right? But unfortunately, this is not the case. Um, everyone would be having success if this was actually the truth. And those kind of diets are not sustainable. And it's easy to get caught in a yo-yo dieting loop where you're, um, you diet for a while and you go back you're eating and you gain all the weight back, right? I'm sure um, many of you have experienced that at least once or twice, right? So it's important to recognize that not all calories are created equal, and we're going to talk about that. And that's why calorie counting just doesn't work because a calories, say you compare calories of a Twinkie to the calories of an avocado, they may have similar calorie counts, but the way your body metabolizes those two foods are vastly different, right? The avocado has healthy fat protein and fiber, and that sends some different signals to your body on how to metabolize that a lot slower and give your body more sustainable energy versus the Twinkie that turns into sugar like that, and we've got a sugar rush and a sugar crash, and then a whole cascade of hormones that um, really don't make us feel good, right? So they're metabolized very differently. You couldn't just count those calories because they're going to do something different in the body. So our modern diet, um, which many of us have raised to, uh, on as our normal healthy diet, uh, really is a mismatch for our metabolic machinery. Our genetics were not designed to be able to um, deal with this high level of carbohydrates and simple sugars that we are consuming um, on a regular basis. So modern food manufacturing practices have utterly failed, unfortunately, in improving health and increasing longevity. Today, two thirds of, American, of the American population are overweight or have di diabetes or um, other chronic illness. And one in three women, as well as half of all men, will develop some form of cancer in their lifetime. There's an answer to all of these terrible health trends though. Um, it all starts with the nutritional composition of your diet. That's the good news. You have some control. Most people simply eat far too many processed foods, um, too many net carbs, and, and too many unhealthy fats. So we'll talk about what healthy fats are, um, as well as too many um, processed foods. So re re that results in gaining um, as well as retaining extra body fat and becoming increasingly insulin resistant. So our modern diet does wreak havoc on our mitochondria. If you haven't, if you remember these little parts of the cell from um, science class, uh, they are the powerhouses of the cell. That's where we're actually burning um, energy. So we're burning the foods that we're consuming and turning them into ATP. And this ATP is what we need to stay alive and provide energy for the body. Uh, the mitochondria is also important for keeping our cells healthy. They actually are helpful for um, and responsible for what we call apoptosis or programmed cell death. So they help get kind of clear out the dead cells so that your, your, your new healthy cells can work better and have more space um, to live healthy. So when your mitochondria are dysfunctional, not only will your energy reserve decrease just because you, your cells just can't keep up with the amount of energy that you need, um, that results in fatigue and brain fog. And But you can also become vulnerable to degenerative diseases like heart disease and diabetes as well as neurodegenerative diseases. So 
And when we have an impaired metabolism, this does lead to leaking in a variety of different ways. When our metabolic machinery doesn't function up to par, our bodies increase the rate at which glucose is stored as fat. Um, and we create more, um, and we really don't break down that fat very easily as well, and we can't convert it into energy. So we become better at storing fats and making new fat cells and worse at burning fat for energy when our metabolic machinery doesn't work so well. In addition, it is theorized that fat cells are not merely inert fat storage units, but um, they can also interact with our bodies and um, affect our hormone balance, and they can secrete cytokines, which are inflammatory molecules. So all of these can really affect our health, right? Um, so not only does impaired metabolism lead to weight gain, but it can also um, lead to poor brain health if we're creating inflammation, right? So studies have shown that hypoglycemia or bl low blood sugar can significantly affect um, short-term um, cognition on tests of memory and attention. And many of us think of it like brain fog, right? You've experienced that before. Uh, but merely uh, beyond the short-term outcomes, this can affect the brain over time and really chronically imbalanced blood sugar levels are a paramount instigator of age-related cognitive decline. So it's important to think about this. It's not just the short-term effects. So how do we fix our impaired metabolism? You should be wondering about that at, at this point. Uh, well, we want to get our bodies to burn fat for fuel, and that actually improves the mitochondrial um, function. Um, eating a, a diet that is low in car net carbohydrates and high in healthy fats will allow your body to burn fat rather than glucose as its primary fuel. So this does have that sought after benefit of improving mitochondrial function, which is actually foundational for our health, vitality, and energy. One tool that you can use to improve the health of your mitochondria is a ketogenic diet. And that's one of the most exciting things about the ketogenic diet. Yes, um, many people find that they can um, maintain or lose weight and that is wonderful, but um, the way that it can be beneficial is by really supporting healthy mitochondrial function. So to understand ketogenic diets, we really must understand the conditions in the body that are needed to promote ketosis. And how we have to learn a little bit about how our bodies beta oxidize fatty acids for energy. So let's take a quick deep breath and we're gonna have a mini biochemistry party. Oh gosh, okay. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna explain this whole cycle of energy production right here, but we are gonna talk about <laughs> We are going to talk about the Krebs cycle um, so that you can understand how um, fatty acids and proteins and carbs are broken down into energy. So the Krebs cycle is where ATP or our cellular energy is produced and you can create ATP from a variety of energy sources. So when we are consuming fatty acids in our diet, they get broken down into a compound called acetyl-CoA and that compound goes through the Krebs cycle and pumps out ATP for our cells for energy. And then if we are eating protein or carbohydrates, they convert into a molecule called oxaloacetate and that compound goes through the Krebs cycle and um, at the end is turned into ATP or cellular energy. So um, fat as well as protein and carbs can fuel our bodies. Um, but has anyone heard that fat burns in a carbohydrate fire? Well, um, this is why we do need carbohydrates for fatty acids to actually enter the Krebs cycle to make um, ATP, but then where does ketosis come in? Let's talk about that for a bit. So if the supply um, of fatty acids is greater than proteins and carbohydrates, we're gonna end up with more acetyl-CoA in the cell. So when we have that, where we have more of that versus oxaloacetate, some of that acetyl-CoA gets turned into an alternate energy source called ketones. We can still turn some into ATP, but we're also going to be using that excess and converting them into ketones. And that's an alternative energy source for the brain as well as the body and the liver. Both, since both carbohydrates and proteins do convert into oxaloacetate, you do have to limit your consumption 
of carbohydrates as well as protein to a certain extent to make sure that you're not producing or you're not creating too much oxalic acetate that would compete for acetyl-CoA. So both protein and carbs can bump you out of ketosis. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about you know recommendations for how much protein but just so that know that you um if you are on keto and you kind of munch down on protein too much you can actually take yourself out of ketosis all right so let's just compare different um fuels and give you a little um analogy so you can kind of picture the difference in, in fat burning versus glucose burning so ketones which are produced from um, having too much uh, higher amounts of fat in the diet. Um, ketones are called beta hydroxybutyrate. That's the compound in the body. Uh, and that causes a direct modification to that Krebs cycle so that you are gonna generate um, cellular energy and it's actually a cleaner burning fuel. So you have less uh, free radicals produced. Ketone burning is especially beneficial for mitochondrial health. Mitochondria like to burn fat um, because it's more efficient. And um, when you're actually not eating a lot of fat, the mitochondria can sometimes atrophy or you may not have an, as many because you don't need them as much to burn fat. Um, glucose burning does not require a lot of mitochondrial um, stimulation. So sometimes if you're uh, on a, like a standard American diet and um, continually consuming carbohydrates that fuel your glucose, then um, your mitochondria actually start to, to atrophy. So if you're um, eating more fat and you're contributing to that ketone pool, you're actually supporting that mitochondria and you can actually create more because your body needs more to burn those fats. Um, so if you, the analogy for um, a ketone fire might be more like a really big solid log that you can put on the fire that burns for a longer period of time. It's going to give you the more sustained energy. Akin then to um, if you are um, utilizing glucose as fuel, you're going to have to throw more newspaper, more kindling. That's kind of the example of what glucose burning is, because every few hours you're going to have to burn more. It's the newspaper, the kindling gets burned up very quickly versus the long burning logs. So you end up having frequent high carb meals and snacks to help to keep you going and keep your energy going. Um, and so there's other ways that you can uh, create mitochondrial cells or even support the mitochondrial function besides the ketogenic diet. And you can kind of do those along with the ketogenic diet to really maximize your results. Things like fasting can support mitochondrial health, um, high intensity interval training or um, endurance workouts that actually supports mitochondrial um, function and um, Ketogenic eating is another one. So those are a couple things you can combine with the keto diet to get extra results, or those are just alternative things that can benefit your um, mitochondria. So a ketogenic diet can help those who are wanting to lose weight, yes. Uh, and studies have shown that a keto diet can help with healthy blood sugar and um, healthy insulin function, which in turn um, can be good for healthy lipid levels and help balance cholesterol levels, which is great. All of those contribute to a healthier metabolism and a healthier heart too. Your brain can actually use ketones for energy, which is really, really cool. Um, so when our, if we are insulin resistant, our brain are, brains are often also insulin resistant. Ketones provide an alternative fuel to just help keep the brains going. Um, one unique fatty acid that can actually mimic ketosis is medium chain fatty acids. Okay, it's really dry. Um, so back to talking about medium chain fatty acids, you can um, supplement with MCT oil, which provides them, and they convert directly in the liver, <coughs> excuse me, to ketones, which your brain can use for energy. Thank you again. Sorry about that. And because... Um, Ketones are actually produced without the um, 
the ketogenic diet is kind of a nice way, a supplemental tool to support cognition without having to go on a strict ketogenic diet. MCT also is helpful for supporting um, ketone production initially when you are kind of transitioning into a ketogenic diet. So it's a great tool to use then too. But there's a lot of really cool research showing that MCT oil <coughs> is beneficial for, um, for brain health and cognition. There was one study where they induced hypoglycemia and show, showed that it affected cognition, memory, um, attention. But when they gave the subjects only MCT oil, they saw that those effects were erased, even though they were eating the, the same diet and still induced the low blood sugar. So that's kind of rare to have a supplement actually erase those effects. And also there's a study that showed that um, MCT oil helped with improving age-related cognitive decline and um, also with a ketogenic diet, you see this as well. Healthier, older adults on a very low carbohydrate diet can support their memory. And the higher their ketones were, the better their memory score was. So there is some other kind of um, nice little benefits of doing keto for the brain. So let's learn how to keto. The first step is to really get yourself um, to weed out all of your packaged foods, processed foods, and put an emphasis on whole and real foods um, with plenty of healthy fats initially, and then eating some uh, non-fiber carbohydrates, like low-carb veggies, like leafy greens, and we'll talk a little bit more about what um, that looks like. But the healthier you go with keto, the better you're going to feel. So it's usually a good idea for the next, for the first um, couple of weeks to really just clean your diet up. Diet up. And um, one of the books that I usually talk about when I talk about the ketogenic diet is this book called The Keto Reset Diet by Mark Sisson. And um, he says, well, his book is titled Reboot Your Metabolism in 21 Days and Burn Fat Forever. Wouldn't that be nice? So he guides you through going through like a first, you know, three week cleaning up the diet, eating healthier, incorporating healthy fats, getting used to eating that way. And then he guides you how to go into keto kind of the healthy way. <clears throat> so I do suggest that um, when you're reducing and temporary eliminating all grains or any fat foods that are high in sugar, um, those are the other things you want to think about doing when you're doing keto. And then as a general rule, you're going to reduce your net carbohydrates to 20 to 50 grams per day or less. And then you're going to restrict your protein to one gram per kilogram lean body mass. So how do you figure that one out? <clears throat> if you take your, your body weight in pounds, you would um, convert it then to kilograms. So you would multiply your pound weight uh, by 0.0. 0.453 kilograms, and that would give you the kilograms. And then you multiply that by one gram to get you your recommended amount of protein per day. But you can also rely on apps so you don't have to do the math. <laughs> I like chronometer.com. It's a great app. It's free. And you just put in um, information like height and weight and goals and then how strict you want to um, do keto and then it will give you some recommendations as far as calories, macronutrients, your ketogenic goals, how much protein, carbs, and fat you want to shoot for. And then as you go through and, and type in all the foods you're eating, you'll be able to see if you're hitting your goals. And even it'll, it's nice because at the end of the day, you can see, oh, well, can I have a little carbs at the end of the day? Or should I just eat some fat and protein? So it allows you to, to be able to know um, if you're sticking with the ketogenic diet. So that website or the app again was chronometer, C-R-O-N-O-M-E-T-E-R.com. Um, and this is um, an app that was designed by Dr. Mercola. 
So the strict keto diet is really not really meant for like the long term. There aren't any really um, long term studies yet on people being on keto for longer than a year or two. So it's uh, recommended kind of cycle your ketogenic diet initially, maybe give it like um, a two to four week trial, see how you like it, but it's not really recommended to kind of stay on for longer than two to three months. And there's some people that, um, that definitely do okay. And, you know, because of their health condition and the reason they're doing a keto diet, like if you have epilepsy, uh, it's something that can definitely support um, and manage it. Uh, and those, that's really the only uh, exception in the long-term ketogenic diet. Um, otherwise, um, there are some conditions where you might want to just be cautious and talk to your doctor about going on keto um, before you jump in. And make sure you do your research as well before you, you start a ketogenic diet. If you have low thyroid function or hormone imbalance, um, even adrenal fatigue, if you have a lot of stress, um, sometimes a ketogenic diet can affect cortisol. Um, if you're already not getting a lot of sleep or you're already struggling with constipation, a ketogenic diet can be low in fiber, so it can worsen that. Um, so there's certain things that you can do to support all of those things before jumping in to keto. I mentioned uh, keto cycling. And so that might be initially you, you do it for two to four weeks and then you just kind of do it. You could do it you know, a couple of times a year. You could do it just on the weekends. Um, and this might actually kind of mimic more of our um, feast or famine cycling that our ancestors experienced where we came into larger amounts of foods, but then food was scarce at certain times. And our body actually naturally did go into ketosis when food was scarce. Even if you think about in the winter time, in the summertime, fruits and other um, vegetables that are higher in carbohydrates are more readily available. But then if we didn't have refrigeration or good storage um, capabilities, then in the winter time, we're subsisting more on things like meats and um, fats and things that um, we can store. So that um, is kind of more mimicking the the ancestral eating. So um, do, if you want a little bit of a tune up, if you like keto and then you want to kind of tune your, your body up here and there, you can kind of jump into keto um, maybe just two to three times a week or you, you cycle it throughout the year. So it's up to you. Um, and you could also just, um, you, your body will make ketones if you're on a ketogenic diet, but you can add medium chain fatty acids to get some of the benefits of a ketogenic diet. Not all of them, but it does actually um, provide a ketone for the body to utilize for the brain. And it does actually bump up fat metabolism. Medium chain fatty acids are very quickly burned by the liver for energy um, and turned into ketones. I do recommend that you start low and go slow with something like MCT oil. Usually the recommendations on the bottle are to take a tablespoon a day, start out with one teaspoon and kind of build up so you can avoid upset stomach and um, diarrhea. Um, and it doesn't take too long to get your body used to MCT oil, but just typically take it slow at first. Um, maybe over the course of like a week or two, your body should adapt and be able to take that higher dose. <clears throat> But yes, like the picture there <laughs> shows you, um, if you don't increase slowly over time, you can um, run the risk of having disaster pants is what I would say. <laughs> so um, you can also take a supplement of keto salts. So it is basically like a beta hydroxybutyrate um, compound. We're calling these exogenous ketones. So these are ketones that are coming from outside the body but can be used by keto dieters. Um, our liver naturally produces what we call endogenous ketones during ketosis. Um, but the body does utilize these um, exogenous ketones very similarly and um, it can support a transition into the ketogenic diet. It can help you feel better, kind of give you a little bit more of an energy boost until your body really does kick in and can um, get the mitochondria to function well enough to to produce enough ketones. So we do carry um, 
this product here, the Ancient Nutrition Keto Fire, which provides the BHB or beta hydroxybutyrate. But this one actually has some other kind of cool additives to it, some adaptogens like ashwagandha. There's MCT in there. There's um, bone broth, lipase, so fat digesting enzyme, apple cider vinegar and ginger, as well as some um, keto salts or some some electrolytes. So it's a really cool supplement to, to consider um, helping you transition into a ketogenic diet. There's others out there too. There's powders of BHP, which you can just add to your water. I think those are really convenient. Um, so just come in and kind of take a look at what we have. No matter what healthy diet you're on though, um, when you have stress, your, adren your adrenals can be dysregulated and you might not get the results you want. So that's very important when you're going into a ketogenic diet to maybe assess um, how you're feeling, if you're struggling with stress, you might consider starting some adaptogenic herbs. Adaptogenic herbs are really cool because they help to maintain um, basically homeostasis in the body. They um, are really helpful for getting cortisol in balance, helping you sleep better, helping you feel more balanced and have more energy. Um, so keto detractors and proponents alike do often warn that remaining in ketosis can be detrimental for healthy thyroid function. Um, and the thyroid's a pretty important gland, right? It's kind of the master regulator of metabolism and the, the rate of metabolism of, of neurotransmitters that help us feel good, um, temperature regulation. It helps control um, the metabolism of blood fats and um, fertility, energy, metabolism. Um, and overall wellness. So keeping your thyroid health is important. <laughs> so herbs like ashwagandha can be really supportive for boosting healthy thyroid function as well as supporting adrenal function. And for some people getting keto adapted can be kind of stressful. You might um, start into a ketogenic diet only to find out all of a sudden you're not sleeping well or you're feeling stressed more. Uh, and that's where these adaptogenic herbs can come in as well. Um, especially if you're um, an exerciser and you're doing a lot of physical, heavy physical activity, it would be important to make sure you're supporting um, your adrenals. Um, so astragalus, rhodiola, reishi mushrooms, another great adaptogen, taking extra vitamin C, those are just all some great things to bolster your body under stress. All right, so there's some other tips and tricks that can help you on a ketogenic diet. Um, since you do have to restrict your carbohydrates to 20 to, to 50 grams a day, a lot of the higher fiber fruits or maybe some vegetables that you were eating before, or even if you're a grain eater, you maybe eat oatmeal for breakfast, um, you're not gonna be getting those fibers. So it's important to make sure that you're adding healthy fiber in a certain from maybe key, um, chia seeds or flax seeds would be beneficial um, and taking a probiotic because that helps to maintain the health of the good bugs. Some of those fibers actually feed good bacteria. So taking a probiotic helps to maintain that um, balance in the gut. And you might also make sure that you're really focusing on eating lots of low carb veggies like broccoli and spinach and kale and chard, um, celery. So bumping up those veggies will really help. Uh, zucchini, I didn't mention that, will help increase your fiber consumption. Um, pretty much all of the negative symptoms that you can experience with a ketogenic diet are actually associated and can be prevented by getting enough electrolytes. This is definitely huge. Um, if you don't do anything else, definitely make sure you're getting your electrolytes in when you start keto. And the reason for that is that when we are eating a carbohydrate fueled diet, um, we have higher levels of glucose in the blood, and we also then have higher levels of insulin. Insulin is the hormone that metabolizes all that glucose. So when insulin is high, it holds on to sodium in the body. Um, and so one of the kind of goals and um, benefits of ketogenic diet, when you're dropping your carbohydrates so low, your body doesn't need to release as much insulin. Good thing for inflammation, for heart health, um, and feeling good and brain health, but then lower insulin or more normalized insulin levels results in less sodium retained. So one of the biggest things you will notice um, 
when you jump into keto is that um, your sodium levels lot, lot drop, your potassium levels, and magnesium is another mineral that's actually important too. So you, you need to make sure you're consuming sodium in a supplement form, an electrolyte form, um, and I'm going to go ahead and recommend um, to increase it almost double what you would normally think of as a daily value for sodium. So um, five to seven grams of sodium a day, um, and then magnesium kind of in the range of 350 to, to 500 and, uh, or 500 milligrams of magnesium can be beneficial. Magnesium will help with like muscle aches and fatigue and inflammation. Um, and then potassium, uh, at least get the daily value of potassium, if not anywhere in the range of 1,000 to 3,500 milligrams of potassium a day. So those minerals are super important. And that's why we do sell mineral supplements. There's keto electrolyte supplements um, that can be beneficial. You can add um, pink Himalayan sea salt or the real salt to your water, uh, and that would help hydrate you, salt your foods, eat salty foods like olives, or um, other things that would be like salami maybe, <laughs> just some of the other kind of salty foods too. Um, pickles, <laughs> some people do pickle juice when they're on keto, but um, th that's really important. You could also drink bouillon or you can add salt to your bone broth, but just kind of be um, aware of that. We have a great ele um, electrolyte supplement called Ultima and it's stevia sweetened, so there's no sugar. That'd be another idea. And then next, um, I just want to talk about um, eating healthy fat versus just eating more fat. And I think that's the biggest misconception, misconception where um, and where the Atkins diet fell short is that it didn't preach nutrient density. So overall, it wasn't necessarily a healthier diet, even though it might be supportive for mitochondrial function. Um, People hear keto and they kind of do think of eating wheelbarrows full of bacon, right, or butter, and uh, rather than a diet that's filled with healthy fats and an abundance of high fiber, nutrient dense, low carb veggies. So that's the difference when um, we're thinking about healthy keto eating versus traditional Atkins. Um, so healthy fats are going to be things like avocados, avocado oil, olive oil, organic butter dairy, cheese that's organic, that's, you know, higher in fat, um, the fat on meats that you're eating, like beef or chicken thighs, um, a little bacon's okay, uh, nuts and seeds. So really looking at those healthy fats and paying attention to where they're coming from and really avoid the hydrogenated fats or vegetable oils, because those types of fats can really cause an, a lot of inflammation in the body. So go through your pantry and kind of clean out the junk, kind of look at it. Is it sugary? Is it a lentil or a bean? You're not going to be eating these foods um, for a while. Definitely if it's sugar, just get it out of your cabinet. <laughs> Box them up and take them to your local food bank. And then stock your kitchen with good food. That's the fun part. You get to go shopping, um, take a shopping list and, and, and bulk up on like frozen veggies, like broccoli, um, get some frozen and protein like shrimp and chicken, Brussels sprouts, um, get some things for your fridge like the leafy greens, get some salmon, eggs, cheeses, um, and maybe some nuts like sunflower seeds if you need some healthy oils to have around like avocado oil or coconut oil, really kind of um, stock up on those things as well as making sure you have some yummy spices around because that's really going to help you flavor your food and, and add some fun when you're cooking. So let's go ahead and talk about some meal ideas um, for keto eating. For breakfast, um, you can uh, try out the high fat coffee where you put MCT oil and organic butter or ghee in your coffee. Um, you can try to replace um, regular potato hash browns with turnip hash browns, tasty, and um, kind of fills that, um, that need for potatoes without the carbs. Scrambled eggs on spinach or arugula, um, egg muffin ham cups, or like other type of egg muffins. You can throw veggies in there or cheese. 
You can have a breakfast salad if you want. Um, smoothies are great, it's not a nice quick way. Um, Mark Stiston is the author of this Keto Reset Diet. He's also has lots of great recipes in here. And he has a go-to green smoothie with full fat coconut milk, vanilla, a handful of greens, coconut oil, crushed ice, and then a chocolate or vanilla protein powder that does not have any added sugar. So that would be a nice quick breakfast that you could do. Um, and then, yeah, like if you're looking for other breakfast ideas, his book, The Keto Reset Diet, is some great, has some great ideas and recipes. So what are some things we can have for lunch? I mean, if you're in a hurry for lunch, always like lettuce wrap or like a kale wrap works really well. Throw like some turkey or some other veggies, um, tuna salad in the, like a little avocado. Um, sweet pepper nachos. You cut up some yummy sweet bell peppers and you sprinkle cheese on top. Um, that would be good. You can have leftovers. Um, having a big salad at least once a day really gives you all the, the fiber and the nutrients that you need. So um, Mark Sisson, um, he's the, again the author of the Keto Reset Diet. Has, he's famous for his big ass salads that he has daily. Um, another one would be a Buddha bowl. Um, so Buddha bowls kind of start usually with rice. So you could substitute the rice with cauliflower rice as the base. And then you add some other like yummy veggies, like roasted veggies, broccoli, zucchini, onion, mushrooms. Um, then you can add some um, cooked chicken thighs. And then you can add fresh veggies too, along with the cooked and um, roasted vegetables. And usually avocado is in a Buddha bowl. If you want to, you can add some kimchi or sauerkraut and sprinkle with salt and pepper. So that's a yummy way to get lots of veggies in, um, get some healthy fats and also get your healthy protein. Some ideas for dinner. Um, there's some cauliflower rice in that picture. It looks almost just like rice and it's really tasty. I love cauliflower rice. You can make it from scratch from steamed cauliflower, but you can also purchase frozen cauliflower rice that's already ready for you. All you have to do is warm it up in the skillet with maybe a healthy fat like butter or um, bacon grease. It's kind of like one of my favorite types of fats to cook with because it, it cooks really easily. Um, so that is a picture of coconut curry shrimp with cauliflower rice. It looks delicious. You have crock pot, utilize it. We have um, some keto re um, recipe books for the crock pot, for the instant pot. You can utilize all these fun cooking, um, cooking gadgets. Um, keto friendly chili, that works really well. Um, barbacoa or carnita tacos. And for your taco, you just use some lettuce wraps, like um, butter lettuce wraps or romaine lettuce wraps are, are gonna work really great for your tacos. So you can um, have tacos for everyone if it's taco night and then for you instead, you'll just do lettuce wraps. Um, another example of a good dinner, like baked chicken with bacon wrapped asparagus, or you can do like a sheet pan meal where you cook, all, you know, your, your chicken thighs or your meat in there and you put all your veggies on the, on the sheet pan as well. So hopefully that gives you some good ideas on meals. If you, again, are looking for more dinner ideas, the Keto Reset Diet is a good one for more ideas. Snacks or desserts. Um, you can incorporate some healthy snacks and desserts on keto. Um, this is a yummy picture of like avocado um, coconut fudge, which is super delicious. Um, Mark Sisson's green tea tahini bites. So kind of like the little keto energy fat bombs or energy bites. You can make those up pretty easily and have them around. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The picture is the chocolate avocado mousse. It's not the fudge. <laughs> uh, zucchini pizza bites are always kind of a fun thing. You slice the, the zucchini in little rounds and then you put some sauce and some cheese on them and just warm or melt the cheese in the oven. You can make bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers. So there's lots of fun things um, to think of for, for snacks. If you're in a pinch and you need to buy some snacks from our store, like olives, we have little snack packs of olives, um, nuts, packs of nuts, um, a half an avocado with a little bit of salsa or just sprinkled with salt and pepper and some lime juice um, is good and maybe you eat that with like some crudités like some celery or cucumber or some bell pepper slices. 
So the ketogenic diet is maybe not appropriate for um, some people or just that they need to really work with their doctor and just look into it and research it before they jump in. Um, so certain um, conditions like thyroid conditions, you want to make sure that your doctor is okay with it. If you have an eating disorder, keto can be very, very strict and kind of um, contribute um, to not eating a lot of foods. So be careful with that. Um, type one diabetics or type two diabetics that are on insulin really just at least need to talk to their doctor. If they're monitored, it can be done. Um, if you're taking any prescription medications, you just want to make sure that your doctor's aware because it can definitely shift body chemistry and maybe can impact some certain medications. Um, people with adrenal fatigue, uh, again, I mentioned earlier that um, starting keto can be a little bit stressful sometimes for the, the adrenals, so making sure that um, you address that um, to begin with. If you have trouble with fat digestion or you have liver disease, you're going to be eating a lot more fat. Even though it's healthier fat, it might put a little bit of stress on your liver and gallbladder if it's already stressed. So do think about that. Do you think about some doing some things to help support liver and gallbladder function before you jump in? And it's usually not a good idea to um, do keto when you're pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, you don't want to have any restrictions on your diet necessarily then, as well as children and teenagers that are still growing and need um, plenty of nutrition. They usually don't want to go on a ketogenic diet unless they're using it for specific therapeutic um, conditions under the guidance of a trained professional. So if you want to find um, some practitioners in town that can help you kind of dive into this and find out if it'd be a good choice for you. We do have a list here at the store of local practitioners in Colorado Springs that we've had like good feedback from or that we work with and um, we can definitely give you some guidance on some um, either naturopaths or functional medicine doctors that you might um, get some uh, advice on before you jump into keto. And of course, there's lots of resources out there. there there's the uh, book I've been referring to a lot, The Keto Reset Diet by Mark Sisson. Uh, Mark Hyman wrote a book called Eat Fat, Get Thin, which is a great one. It really just talks about the benefits of keto and just eating fat and how great it can be for your brain, your skin, your heart, and um, how satisf sat satisfying it can be. And Dr. Mercola wrote a book called Fat for Fuel. So more ideas. Um, I do like this book. It's called Ketotarian, and it's written by Dr. Will Cole. I like it if you're kind of vegetarian-ish, and maybe you can't do a lot of the dairy on a ketogenic diet. It gives you some ideas for a little bit more plant-based keto. Um, so yeah, good um, one to check into. And then also Dr. Josh. Axe has a keto diet book that's really great as well with all, I like all the recipes, uh, gives me some good ideas. So yeah, if you're still kind of like wondering about if the keto diet is good for you, I offer those free one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions that are available all the time to customers. So you can contact me at the, at the store, just call the store at 719-577. 2500 and we can set up a time to do a coaching session. I can kind of guide you a little bit more. I have shopping lists. I have some other troubleshooting handouts that I can give you. Um, and then also you can sign up for those coaching sessions now at naturalgrocers.com. If you go there, you can sign up for a coaching session online with me. So hopefully now you feel a little bit more equipped and maybe you at least understand all the benefits of ketogenic diet and how to implement it. Um, it's much better to um, add in some supplements that can be beneficial, some electrolytes, eat enough fiber, take some probiotics if digestion is a concern, address like your adrenals, stress and sleep before you jump in. <laughs> um, so yeah to determine how successful you'll be on keto, it does take a little bit of planning and um, it's a good idea to kind of clean up your diet before you jump into keto. 
So if you're interested in joining me for my 21 days to a healthier you classes that I'm doing starting January 25th, that would be a good idea because we'll kind of walk you through um, the things that you would need to do anyways to get clean up your diet before you do keto. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I think Pikes Peak Library District for allowing me to offer these classes. And um, I hope to see you coming into Natural Grocers to say hello. And if you've got questions about keto, I'd be happy to answer them.